guys, it's Lauren Yates from Rave It Up here, and today we're going to be chatting over Skype with American actor Zach Avery. Zach, welcome to Rave It Up. It is a pleasure to have you on the show today. How are you going? Thank you so much. Everything's going very well. Happy to be here. Oh, I'm so glad. Is this your first Australian chat as well? I think this is my first Australian chat. I've worked with a couple of Australians, but never had a one-on-one -on -one interview with Australians, so I'm excited. Hey, exclusive for Rave yeah. It Up. There we go. Now, since this is your first time on the show, we'd love to get to know you a little bit better and start from the beginning to get a good idea of how you made it to where you are today, if that's okay. <laughs> now, I did read that, you know, you spent your teen years playing football and, you know, dabbling in high school theatre. So is it true that you originally wanted a career in NFL? So it's the thing is that like I've, I've always been into sports. I've always played football when I was younger. And so it was one of those kind of paths that when you're doing something, especially when you're young and you're quote unquote good at it, you kind of continue along that path and people kind of guide you in that direction. So it was in the sense of, oh, I'm doing this thing and I feel like I'm good at it and people are telling me I'm good at it and I'm having fun. And so I'm going to continue until something kind of pivots me in another direction. And obviously an injury in college did that. And it was it was a goal, I guess you could say, that I, I, I had the goal that I wanted to be in the NFL and kind of that pipe dream. But reality was, at the end of the day, it wasn't something that I was 100% like, this is it and this is what I'm going to do. It was just kind of what I was doing at the time. And I think, you know, it's it's better in the long run that I kind of pivoted in this direction. So it all worked out. Yeah, well, you're good at it. You had a, you know, you enjoyed it. So you might as well have gone down that direction for as long as you could. Yeah, exactly. And I think it also taught me a lot of things that I can take in other, in other avenues as well with acting and everything else. There's a lot of things that come from team sport and that sort of uh, environment that you can move into something else. Teamwork. <laughs> Well, I think acting was the good choice because you're also very good at that. And I guess, so much, yeah. you know, I guess with sport, you know, I think people kind of forget that when they go into it that, you know, you have to retire quite young because, you know, our bodies can't keep up. So at least with acting, you can continue acting, you know, for the rest of your life if you want. <laughs> as long as people will let me act, I will continue acting no matter what. So that's very true. There's so many different avenues too. You can get into directing like a lot of actors are doing now. So sure. opportunities now, endless. Like. Yeah, with all the, the different platforms and everything that's going on, there's so many possibilities out there that you can kind of have your pick, hopefully at, at certain things that you're passionate about. Mm, absolutely, good choice. <laughs> Thank you. So, with playing football in school and wanting to be in the arts, did you experience any bullying or anything like that? Because obviously in football you're like the macho guy and, you know, cool. <laughs> it was an interesting thing. It's not really bullying in, in per se. It was more of just like this split life personality of that you're going to football practice, you're doing the quote unquote jock thing and it's it, you have that group. But then because I also had the passion for the acting side and the theater and things like that, I would then do that as well. And so it was like this kind of split personality where it was two different friends groups. It was two different social settings. And it was definitely two different kind of physical activities, but I made it work in, in some way. I think it's because I really gave a hundred percent to the football side and a hundred percent to the acting side in different spaces that it never felt like I was sliding one side or the other. And I somehow was able to kind of go back and forth between social groups and it, it worked out for me. So maybe it was luck or who knows what, but thankfully I, I got around the bullying. <laughs> well, that's good. So no one gave you a hard time. Not, not really. Yeah, it was all right. Oh, well, that's good. Cause I know that there's probably a lot of other people in the world that do get a bit of slack for it. Totally. And I think if, if the football side wasn't as successful, quote unquote, I think it, it definitely might have been an issue, right? Is that you usually see that in a situation where you have the jocks, you have that kind of stereotypical manly thing going on. And then where theater isn't from the outside looking in, at least that sort of kind of jock environment that, you know, there may be bullying happening. But I think because I, you know, I guess it, it worked in both senses that it, it was it worked out. Oh, that's good. And yeah. after graduation, you did enter into the doctoral program at the Chicago School of Professional Psychology. Yeah. That's very different from acting or football. So what made you yeah, want to in enter into that? You know, was that a plan B or did you choose it because you kind of had to? <laughs> 
Yeah, I, I really was kind of pushed into that. And it was it was a thing. So my my mom who raised me, she was a lifelong educator. She was a teacher. She has an education foundation. She's she's been in that world. And so for her, the thought of me saying like I want to be an actor or I want to be an athlete and that's the kind of career path that I'm going to go on just wasn't realistic. And she was like, Look, get your get a degree do the kind of work, quote unquote, that you need to do from an education standpoint. And then once you're done with that, you can do whatever you want. So I went through undergrad, I got a psychology and sociology degree, and I got into this grad school and I was I was gonna do it. I was like, all right, I'm gonna put the time into this and then focus on the real passion. It took about three months and I was like, no, this is not gonna work. I'm not gonna spend the next six years of my life in a classroom doing something that I, I know it's not what I want to do. And so, I took a leave of absence and kind of followed my heart and went down the acting path and thankfully it worked or my mom would have killed me. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I'm sure she probably was not happy in the beginning. <laughs> oh, I didn't even tell her in the beginning. It took a while for me to actually tell her about it. So it was it was a process, but we got there. So you had a bit of uh, a hidden uh, hidden personality and trying to oh, hide the whole oh. acting thing. You know, I'm still studying. <laughs> Yeah, I'm still in school. I'm really, I'm doing the little black box theater in the middle of Chicago that no one sees, but we're, we're studying something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Not what she thinks you're yeah. studying. Exactly. <laughs> well, in the long run, it was good that you didn't go down that path, because as you said, so six far, years, exactly. like, you Just definitely could have chosen something to study that wasn't as long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously. That was the thing. It's just, it, you know, when I really was in class and I'm like, this can't be my life for the next six years. It's just not going to work. Yeah, psychology, geez. I can understand why people, if they don't know what they want to do, they just do like, you know, an arts degree or something. <laughs> yeah, completely. It or a really business works. degree, like, you know. It makes sense now, like thinking with the passion with acting is that like, I'm really interested though in why people do the things they do and what makes them tick and all of those little like personality traits that you quote unquote learn in psychology. But yeah, I think that's really what the drive was there, not necessarily the degree or, or sitting on the opposite side of a couch helping people with their problems. <laughs> yeah, hearing about their drama. <laughs> exactly. Not, not my cup of tea. <laughs> so do you think in the three months that you were studying it, you did learn a lot and you're you're able to you know, put it either into your acting or to your real life? Yeah, I mean, I think because I the whole undergrad career was that too. So I think I had the four years of undergrad and then plus that. There definitely is things that I learned. But when I really think about it, when I talk to other actors, it's about watching people, right? It's not about what you can read in a textbook or what you see in a classroom. It's about really being able to connect with the outside world and watch people do what they do on a daily basis and their mannerisms and being able to be empathetic and all of those different things that you only learn from living and experiencing and watching. And so, yes, I did. But I think that it's too cerebral. It's too, you know, up in your head. And when you get up there, then the acting doesn't work. So you kind of have to balance it out. Mm. And I'm sure with getting you uh, kind of learning in the outside world, how people work and all that, it kind of helps you get into different characters, I'm guessing. For sure. For sure. Because you can kind of imagine them, right? Is that you read something on a page and it's this character that may be down and out on his luck and he had problems with his girlfriend or wife or whatever it may be. And you can go back to that friend or that person or whoever you saw or heard the story or even saw on TV that you can kind of draw little things here and there from those characters and then put them into the character that you're building and build uh, build on top of that. Wow. We're really getting to the deep nitty gritty of everything, aren't we? <laughs> We're diving in. <laughs> so uh, you were, while studying, you know, attending underground comedy clubs and joined local theatre groups, which was great. And I think, as you said, it kind of led to the decision of, you know, leaving school and pursuing acting full time. And to fund this goal and moving to LA, because you know, that's yeah. where everything is for acting, <laughs> you did yeah. sell quick book software door to door in the oh, Chicago yeah. suburbs. Yeah. So do you think that kind of made you a stronger person mentally and emotionally? Because I'm sure a lot of people said no to what you were selling. Oh yeah, for sure. 98% of the people that I talked to said no, or didn't even listen to what I was selling and said no immediately. So it was one of those things that I needed money, I needed a job, I needed something to make enough to be able to drive across country and do the thing that I knew I was going to do. Put my resume on, I don't even know what it was at the time, some, you know, career builder or whatever it may have been, and got this job. And it was straight commission, basically going out and really in the suburbs of Chicago, selling like payment processing systems door to door. And it, it did. It definitely 
set me up for what was going to be the or audition process once I got to LA of going to thousands of auditions and meeting hundreds of people and just hearing no over and over and over again until you finally get that yes and kind of get through the door and you hold on to that until you get the next one and definitely set me up for that and, and taught me the skills. So it was it was good for what it was. I'm glad I don't do that now, but it was good for what it was. Yeah, you learned a lot from it. It was an experience. Yeah. Were you successful at it? Did you make the money you needed? It was actually pretty good. I mean, that was the weird thing. Is I feel like I was all right at, at slanging the processing system. So it was it was good. If this doesn't work out, maybe I, I can go back. Maybe not that specifically, but at least you're good at sales. You know that. <laughs> and what did you do for money when you actually got to LA? Because, you know, you can obviously focus on doing so many auditions, but you've still got to be able to pay your rent and, and live. For sure. So I I had saved a decent amount while I was doing this, which was nice. And so, and also I moved my girlfriend at the time, who's now my wife, and she worked as well. So between the income that I had saved and her supplement income when she came here, we made it by. Obviously, it was it was very different living than we wanted to be doing at the beginning. But you got to do what you got to do, and and we made it work. Oh, that's good. And obviously, you're doing well now because you're married with kids. So <laughs> exactly. So it, it worked out. But yeah, I mean, obviously, at the first couple of years, it's tough. But when you talk to a lot of people who are kind of chasing a dream, whether it's acting or anything else. It's hard at the beginning. You gotta you gotta climb the, the ladder and, and see what works. So it was worth it. Oh good. Learning from your mistakes and your lessons. <laughs> That's all life is really, isn't it? So you've yep. definitely uh, moved around a lot in your life as well. You know, you're born in Berkeley, California, but moved to Tampa, Florida when you're only about two years old. You grew up there and then moved to Fort Wayne, Indiana with your mom. So do you think it was a good thing that you moved around a lot or a bad thing? <laughs> For sure. I mean, at the time, I did not enjoy it at all. But I think looking back, hindsight, it, it was a great thing because it got me acclimated to different environments. It made me get used to meeting new people and being able to really like show them who I was in a short amount of time. Because when you move to different schools, especially when you're young, you really get inserted into a situation where all the kids already know each other there's already friends groups and you need to be able to kind of insert yourself into that situation in a seamless fashion and that's kind of what you have to do when you're on a film set or a tv set is that everyone's kind of put together and they say okay you are best friends and you've been best friends for the last 10 years now here's a camera we're going to point it at you and make that believable and that's essentially what we have to do and it trained me to do that that i was able to acclimate into those friends groups when i was a kid and so now when i'm on any set and when i have to meet you know x amount of people and really kind of become close with them quickly it feels natural because i've done it many times in the past and i'm guessing it with acting there's a lot of travel involved anyway so it kind of got you used to Living out of a suitcase. <laughs> living out of a suitcase, living in any accommodation that they are like, oh, you're going to live here for three weeks and then you're going to go this place. And so you just like, you roll with the punches and do it. <laughs> yeah, as you said, when you were a kid, it sucked at the time. <laughs> yeah. Now, in terms of your acting career and before we talk about your latest projects, yeah. back in 2014, you were in the movie Fury starring Brad yeah. Pitt. Did yeah. you get to meet him? Because if you did, that is awesome. <laughs> it was crazy. I did, actually. So what they did is they shot Fury in Europe, mostly. And then they did reshoots at this place called Disney Ranch, which is right outside of Los Angeles. And so I was in the reshoot cast. And so basically I came in when they were doing all the reshoots and everyone was there. So I met Brad, I met Shy, I met all those guys. And again, I met them in a sense of like, hi, I'm Zach and nice to meet you. And, you know, I'm a huge fan type of thing. It wasn't a, a full blown conversation, but it was great. I mean, everyone was super nice and friendly and it was just amazing to be able to watch them. I mean, that was the biggest thing. It was one of the earliest things I've done. So to kind of sit back and do the small role that I was doing and be able to watch them do their thing. It's just that's that's kind of like the master class that you can't buy you have to you have to be inserted into the situation it was it was really amazing was that your first like big movie as well i would say big movie for sure yeah it was the first thing where i came on it was you know massive sets there were tanks there were fire there was all this stuff going on where before it definitely was not that and so it was a, a learning experience as well because when you've never experienced something like that 
again, there's no class that can teach you those things. You really have to be there and see it for yourself. And so it was really cool watching them do what they do and seeing how everyone worked from behind the scenes, to the director, to, to all of it. It was, it was a great experience. Well, it's definitely outside your comfort zone, so I'm guessing you're really nervous for that. Of course. I mean, I, I'm nervous for everything, right? Is that, that's the thing. It's like no matter what, every new project you go into, you're nervous because as you grow also, I start thinking like, Am I going to be good in this? Do I know what I'm doing? You have that imposter syndrome where it's like, am I supposed to be here? Are they going to find out that I'm this fraud <laughs> the whole time? So especially for that, I'm like, this is this is a massive movie. Like these, that's actually Brad Pitt right there. Like what is going on? And then once you kind of get settled, it it slows down a bit, but it never stops becoming surreal. I mean, it it was really an amazing amazing surreal experience. Good. So you start to believe that okay, I'm actually supposed to be here. They. <laughs> A little bit, a little bit. Yeah. It takes a while. It still is. A, it still is a process. But eventually, you start to like. All right, I, I know what I'm doing. I have my foundation. I'm all right. We'll just fake it till you make it. <laughs> that's, that's acting, right? <laughs> exactly. That's just life. I think if you don't know what you're yeah. doing, you just fake it till you make it. Make it sound, seem like you know what you're doing. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And you have been through your fair share of auditions in the industry, <laughs> and I did read in a recent an interview with you that you know you you do find every audition like an opportunity to show someone in the industry who you are and what you can bring to the table which I when I read that I just love that positive spin on it because you know most people if they don't get the part feel like it's personal when it's you know business isn't it totally I mean that's what it has to be is that like reality is is that you go into every audition and they want you to kill it. I mean, they want you to be amazing because they're looking for the person that they're looking for and they want to find him or her. So once I kind of got that mindset, I was like, look, we're all here for the same reason. We all want to make the best project pro possible. If you're right for the role and you do what you need to do in the room, it'll work out. If you're not right for the role, potentially you just met someone and impressed them that they're going to do more projects and they'll be able to call you in the future. And since I kind of was able to really like internalize that mindset, it's helped a lot because it takes the pressure off of it. It really makes it where you're kind of preparing for a scene as if you already got the role as opposed to a job interview that you're really nervous about. And by going in comfortable, you make them comfortable and it all, it all kind of works out better. So I think it, in general, it's not an easy thing to do, but if you can do it, it's the truth is that if you talk to any casting director, any producer, director, Every person that they call in for an audition, they're calling in the, for a reason. They like what they've seen in the past or they like what they've said in an interview or whatever it may be. So they want to see you. So just put your best foot forward and see what happens. Just be yourself. That's all they want. Percent. A hundred percent. People shouldn't be taking it personally. I've interviewed like several people where we talk about auditions and, you know, I can't remember who it was, but they said something, you know, like they have their list of things that they need and it could just be that you're say like, a couple of centimeters shorter than they actually needed like <laughs> yeah i mean that's the thing is like it, it really isn't because i i'm now close enough with the producer directors on the other side where they tell me they're like it isn't personal it's not about you it's not about you're a bad actor a good actor a good actress or actor it's just we're looking for a thing and if you're that person then you are if not you're not <laughs> it just it's kind of cut and dry and so it, it's tough. It's very hard because obviously we're emotional people and we put a lot into our work. And so if we go in and, and do a thing and they say like, all right, thank you. You know, we'll give you a call. And then you never hear anything. It hurts. But if you take a step back and really look at it from their perspective, it just is what it is. They're seeing thousands of people and you know, it's, it's just one of those thousands. So you got to, you got to roll with the punches. I think it hurts because it's just, it's your love and your passion and the fact that, you know, they've said no to me, like, oh. <laughs> totally. Especially if it's one of those that you really want, that you're you're passionate about and you feel like it's it's something that you really can see yourself doing. It's, it's disappointing. But I think that's the thing is it's disappointing, but you have to think, well, I was good or I think I was good and hopefully they'll call me for something else. It's the only way to survive, so let's be honest. <laughs> Now, you have been in some more great films recently. You're in Farming, starring opposite Kate Beckinsale, and just finished a film called The Getaway that was alongside Olivia Munn. Yes. How was it working with those two amazing women? Great actresses. Fantastic. Those are the experiences also that 
you know, again, it's surreal. You kind of pinch yourself because you're in a situation, especially when you see who you're acting alongside and who got cast. You go to set or you go to rehearsal, and the first day, it's Olivia Munn, it's Kate Beckinsale, it's, the, it's this kind of person that you've looked at in other movies and admired their work and so on and so forth. But then you break it down and you're just two actors trying to do the best work possible and work together. And once you get to that point, then it's just fun and, and you and you kind of put it in the work and take that outsider perspective away from it, I guess you would say, and be able to say, OK, we're here, we're equal, we're going to do this great, amazing work. And, you know, you do the thing. The difference is, is that they are incredible artists. And so when you are working with them, you need to step your game up because you're like, this isn't something I can just phone in because they're they're bringing their A game every take. So it was it was fun. And it makes you look better because they're just great, you know. And that you've even got the role to star alongside them. <laughs> totally. A hundred percent. Do you think he like fangirled in the beginning when you walked in the room like, oh, <laughs> Yeah, completely. I mean, it was it was a uh, oh, nice, nice to meet you type of situation. And then they, you know, they they're used to it in a sense. So they kind of ease the tension and make it all normal and they're professional as can be. So it's it's fantastic. Both of those experiences were they were great. Yeah. And then it just turns into it's just Kate. It's just Olivia, like two normal girls. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's totally yeah, my mates, my co-stars. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And The Getaway is a really cool thriller, so how is it working on a thriller? Do you prefer it than other genres? I love it. You know, it's one of those things I think that I go in and out of the types of things that I'm kind of searching for. I don't know if it's life experience or whatever's happening, but really, right now, I'm really loving that kind of thriller action type of film. And so this was great. You know, I play a character, Mike, that's coming out of prison that, as you said, is Olivia is my wife, who basically I left three years ago and with my daughter because I was involved in drugs and so on and so forth. And I'm coming out and kind of trying to get straight and do everything right and be the husband and be the uh, the father that I should be. But I kind of get pulled back into that drug world and don't do such a good job of it. And so playing that dynamic between kind of the good guy and the bad guy and, and how I can work through those nuances was really fun. And obviously the cast that they had around me was just incredible. So it was it was a great experience. And you got to play very close to Olivia then if, you, if, the, if she was your wife. <laughs> yes, for sure. <laughs> for sure. Oh, well, all, all the guys listening right now are just very jealous. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great experience. That, that's definitely what I'll say. It was, it was a great experience. A, professional, but great. <laughs> professional, yes. Inside fangirling going, oh my God. Every every guy's dream come true. <laughs> yeah, it was fantastic. And last year you also worked with Janelle Parrish from Pretty Little Liars and Trespasses. So you've definitely worked with some amazing women, as we've just mentioned. Totally. The three of them are yeah. incredible. Do you have a favorite? that you've worked with it's tough because again there's su there's such different projects right is that like it, it really is very specific with the projects janelle was fun because she the roles that we were playing is i was in a relationship with uh angela trimbor's character and we were married and i had and she janelle's character was best friends with her and so in the high school and i had cheated on my wife with Janelle's character in high school. And so we kind of come to this house and all of this tension and drama ensues. And so it was fun playing that dynamic with her because we're not supposed to be together, but we have the secret that no one else knows. But again, with every character, there's there's nuances and layers that you kind of play with. And it's it's all been fun. I don't think I can pick a favorite, but they're all fantastic in their own right and working with all three of them did they you know give you some good advice over the time filming or did you kind of just watch them and learn yourself i think it was a little bit of both you know it's it's one of those things that i think when you're on set unless you're specifically asking for advice i think a lot of actors actually don't want to kind of say like hey you should do this or that because everyone knows their craft and knows their thing but i think watching them and just seeing how especially olivia would talk to the director and talk through scenes that helps a lot with like me really realizing okay maybe you can ask to do this or that if you don't feel comfortable here and there maybe you can change this because you need to be in control of your character and that's something olivia was doing 100 percent. she was just you know sculpting her role exactly how she wanted it to be and if something didn't feel right she brought it up and changed it. And so that that is for sure something that I took away from the experience. It's great. 
And yeah. who's on your list, you know, the top people that you would like to work with in the future? <laughs> yeah, I mean, recently, I've said this before, but Bradley Cooper is definitely one of them. I think when he did Star is Born, it just blew me away. His writing, directing, his acting was incredible in it. I mean, he would be an absolute treat to work with. Um, and then past that, I mean, obviously you have the Leonardo DiCaprio's, you have, yeah, honestly, I would love to work with the Brad Pitt again. You know, it's one of those things that there's these icons that I look up to that would just be fantastic. But honestly, so many, I mean, I could go on and on and on about who I would love to work with, but we'll see. Well, hopefully if you work with Brad Pitt again, it's a bit more of a, uh, actual starring alongside him, not just yeah, you in the uh, background uh, doing yeah. something small. <laughs> Yeah, that would be fantastic. <laughs> exactly, that would be great. Yeah, well, fingers crossed for you. Hopefully, you this so promotion much. with, you know, this interview, uh, you might get there. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so too. And on the other side of this, and we did mention earlier, you are also a husband and a father. So, yeah. how do you find juggling it all and balancing your work and your family life? It's, it's something that you need to work through, right? Is that at the beginning, it was a little tough. So when I, so Jax, my son was born in September, 2017. And I actually left a month after that to shoot farming. And then a month after that to shoot white crow and it was overseas. So I was going to Serbia, I was going to London. And so it was really hard at the beginning because you had to be able to figure out, okay, this is a whole new situation for me. I still am building my career. I'm not in a place where I can just not work for six months and try to, you know, just be home. So it was figuring out with my wife the balance of, okay, I'm going to be gone X amount of time. If we can make it work, you can come with me and be on set and we can be together then. And then it really became a point where like, okay, we're talking two to three weeks is the max that we can be apart. And so we need to figure out whether I come home for a weekend, you guys come out and visit me on set, we make it work no matter what. And so that's really been the, the kind of rule since he's been uh, since he's been around and it's worked. It's not the easiest, obviously, but it's definitely better than, you know, me leaving for months at a time because I just I can't do it. I can't miss all of the walking and talking and everything that's going on. With him. I don't want to miss him growing up. <laughs> Especially, this is like the pivotal time too. Yeah, yeah. as you said, as I mean, he is that's... starting to walk and talk. And... <laughs> For sure, it's and, and that's the thing is it's it before he was here. I think a lot of people, myself included, your career focus. You're thinking on the next role. You're thinking about the next thing you can do. And then the second he arrives, it all changes. You know, it's you're thinking about him and you're thinking about family and you're trying to fit in the work around the family to to obviously pay the bills and and fulfill the passion and everything else. But it really is a, a, a split, and you have to figure out how the puzzle pieces fit together. Yeah, because you can't get this time back, too. It'll be a blink oh, of an eye, and yeah. it'll be grown up driving. <laughs> I know, I know. Not I to know. freak you out or anything, but it, it will happen. No, it's, but it's it's true. That's why when I'm I'm away, even like a week, I'm like, okay, what's what, we got to figure it out. You got to come out. We gotta have to come back. <laughs> we have to figure something else out. You don't just want to see him growing up through, you know, photos and videos oh, and Skype and oh. stuff. I couldn't do it. That's good. <laughs> And this industry is great and you know when you're in a job pays well but then when it's finished and I've spoken to even a lot of musical theater people about this that you know when the job's finished and you're just auditioning and waiting for that next gig do yeah. you personally kind of stress about that especially now with a family and looking after them financially you know do you have also another job on the side just to help yourself out or yeah, no, I mean, thankfully, I can support myself completely with acting as of the last couple of years, which has been great. But <laughs> Thank you so much. But to your point, yeah, it is always stressful. It's one of those things that you are kind of a contracted worker where you're working for a certain amount of time and then you have to find the next gig. What I've tried to do, at least, is be able to say, like, OK, these are the people I want to make connections with. As I spoke to earlier, the directors, the producers, the casting directors, the people that really can get me in the rooms to be able to get these next jobs. So I try to line up multiple opportunities, at least kind of before my last thing ends. So I have something I'm at least tracking towards and not just kind of like, all right, here I am with nothing and, and I'm hoping for the best. And that's helped a lot, being able to have those connections, because I can always call some of my best friends or producers who have multiple projects going at the same time and say, like, hey, 
I just came off this project. I'd love to work on something else. You guys have anything, at least a meeting or, or whatever it may be. And I think a piece of that also is to let your kind of ego and pride aside because a lot of actors, I feel like, like, oh, I just was on this movie and I don't want to go meet on a general and I don't want to go to this audition. And there's no reason for that. Every, like we were talking about earlier, every audition, every meeting is a potentially an opportunity for future work. So for me, I'll take any meeting. I'll go meet with anyone for coffee and spend X amount of time doing it because it has led to work in the past and it will continue. So I feel like as long as I keep doing that, hopefully, knock on wood, everything will be all right. <laughs> well, I thought I'd bring it up because it is definitely a side of the industry and the job that, you know, we don't think about unless you're in it. So I thought Can for I the people that want to do it, it would be a good eye opener. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a constant thing. It's a, you know, obviously it's it's something that I'm working through, but it is never a not a topic on my mind. You know, there you're always thinking about the next job, you're always thinking about the next gig and it's helped a little bit honestly having a kid because you can focus on that. You can say like, you know, that's what's really kind of important right now and we're okay today and we'll figure it out, but reality is is you got to buy the milk, you got to buy the diapers, so you have to work at some point. <laughs> well, speaking of the next gigs and projects as well, what else can we expect from you in the future? Yeah, so I just shot a film called American Carnage in Spain that we just wrapped up, which is really cool. So it's like a political thriller that has to do with race and kind of the immigration situation that's happening in the U.S. right now and all of that. So that'll be definitely a hot topic that comes out uh, next year, which will be will be fun. And then I have a film coming up that's currently titled Trunk, which it won't be called that, but it's a, a thriller that we're shooting in Spain again, weirdly, that has Daniel Caposaro directing, and it's myself and Mario Casa starring, and it's like a Gone in 60 Seconds type of action car chase thriller. So I'm excited about it. It's going to be fun. Wow, you really are de doing de definitely all different movies, aren't you? <laughs> all, all over the place. All over the place, for sure. <laughs> Wow, I don't know how you keep up with it all and memorize your yeah. scripts and all that. <laughs> it's it's a process, but it's the job. It's what I love to do. And do yeah. you have any advice for the people watching today and, you know, our listeners on the radio show who might want to follow their dreams of becoming an actor? Yeah. I would say, like I was say, it's just you got to follow your own passion. you got to follow your own kind of compass, is that you're going to get a lot of feedback from a ton of people out there that are telling you, you should do this and you should do that, and this is a hard career to get into, and there's so many people that want to do it, and maybe you should do a safer bet type of career. Reality is, is if this is truly like the only thing that you want to do, go for it, because you're never going to be happy doing anything else, and you got to follow your passion and follow your heart. So keep going, and, and you'll get there. Life is too short. Those other jobs will always be there. <laughs> thousand percent true. Thousand percent true. Well, that's great advice. Hopefully everybody takes that on board and learns something yeah. from it today. And we are unfortunately getting to the end of the interview, Zach. It's been an absolute pleasure and it's the time's gone way too quickly. <laughs> but as a closing statement and was probably the most important question, knowing what you know now, what would you tell your 14-year-old self? Oof. That's a tough one. I would tell him that everything happens for a reason, that you're going to go through trials and tribulations. You're going to do things that you think are leading you in the wrong direction, but they will all teach you something along the way that you'll use in the future and you'll be all right, kid. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm the biggest believer that everything happens for a reason, so I think that's great advice. <laughs> perfect. I am as well, so that's perfect. And before we go, if the listeners would like to contact you or find out what you're up to in the future, where should they go? Yeah, so Instagram is the main thing. My Instagram handle is Zach Avery. I usually post kind of my updates and what I'm doing on there. And same thing on Twitter, Zach Avery. And so you'll you'll be able to find out all the cool updates and uh, and pictures and weird things I'm, I'm up to. So check it out. Awesome. And thank you so much for coming on the show today. It's been an absolute course, pleasure. No, it's been great. Thank you so much for the interview. You're very welcome. You're welcome on the show anytime. So if you want to chat in the future about some future projects, come back on the show. I will. I look forward to it. Me 
too. Hopefully one day we could do a chat in person. I don't know if you've ever thinking of coming to Australia. I haven't, but I would love to. I heard it's gorgeous out there, so I would love to. It's on the bucket list for sure. If you and all your family come over, just let me know. I'll, I'll, I'll be your tour guide. <laughs> we'll make it happen. Well, I hope you all enjoyed today's interview. If you'd like to check out any of our other interviews, visit our website, raveituptv.com. All the podcasts and videos are there for you to enjoy. But for now, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye!